Welcome back to Silver Flyer on location here in People's Republic of China. In front of you, you have my modest but growing Chinese stack of silver and gold. And uh, I have some recent additions to show to you today. Just in quick review, uh, I bought a dozen coins pre previously, which I featured earlier in an earlier video. Uh, two consecutive sets, a four-year set from 2016 to 2019, and an eight-year set from 2012 to 2019. Those were bought on the internet and um, we'll get into that. I've had some questions and uh, also some comments about how well, people don't trust uh, Chinese coins and whatnot. And I'll cover that a little bit later on in the videos. You see I have some, some uh, equipment up here and uh, what we'll be doing is some measurements, some weights and a specific gravity test for silver. I'll pick out an example, uh, take it out of the packaging and do the uh, entire test in front of you. So we'll get to that a little bit later, but right now I'd like to cover the recent additions, which are uh, a couple of silver coins and some gold. All pandas uh, on the panda theme. I am in China, so I'm kind of sticking with the panda, which are not only legal tender currency in China, but they're also official government coins, each coming with their own certificates. So everything is registered by the government and again, getting into authenticity of the coins bought in China, that'll be part of my discussion a little bit later. Also today, I'd like to cover exporting precious metals as a private individual from China uh, a little bit later on in the video. So first, I'll just get to what I picked up recently. In the last couple of weeks, I was away in uh, the province of Inner Mongolia for work. So I was away from well, most of my stack, my equipment, and I didn't really have a chance to bring out any videos but I've been holding on to this for about a week now and uh, waiting to get these out to you. So first off let's start with the 10th anniversary of the Shanghai Gold Exchange. This is a PCGS rated MS67. 30,000 total mintage and I'm not sure how many PCGS rated but really nice coin really nice condition and uh, picked up for a pretty fair price. I'd have to do the conversion in my head if if you're really curious I can give you some numbers if you send me a message in the comments and whatnot uh, I did pick it up at the China gold coin in Tianjin this is the gold coin they are a franchise so if you're looking uh, for this company you can contact them and basically ask them what local store to wherever you are in China might be and you can go look for yourself. I do have a little bit of video from that store and I'll bring it up to you again in probably a future video and put something together for you. The second uh, silver coin I picked up was the 90th anniversary of the Shanghai Mint. Now this uh, coin was was about 20,000 mintage, not so many. It is the 2010, the other one, uh, the MS67 being 2011. I don't know if you can see that in the bottom below the building there. And this one being the 2010. So a limited mintage, but looking at it very closely, and I don't think you can see it on camera, there might on the outer ring be some discoloring. It's not a rated coin, and again, picked it up for a pretty reasonable rate. It was the last one they had, and you know, it's kind of neat. It's an interesting panda, and fairly low mintage. Each coming with their own, and these are going to talk about certificates later on, is the People's Bank of China. And this is what controls all gold and silver going in or out of the country, and the sales of which. So, and then it has the general information in Chinese and English inside. Interesting, but uh, again, I think probably I might even do that in a separate video, but uh, we'll move on here. Uh, start small here. Um, also uh, boxed up by uh, the People's Bank of China is the eight ounce or eight gram, I wish it was eight ounces, eight gram uh, Chinese panda coin, 2019. Bring this up here for you so you can see it. Also comes with its certificates and whatnot. Really nice coin, eight grams. Uh, it's their version of the quarter ounce. The quarter ounce that we would buy back home would be about seven grams, 0.11, I think. 
Here, they just rounded off to eight grams as they've also changed their coins to 30 grams instead of 31.1 troy, which would be a troy ounce, which they previously did before 2015, I believe. A really nice coin. And in here, they have the one ounce or 500 renminbi, Chinese Panda 2019. Now, this is a Chinese grading company, and the similar, it's actually the same acronym as a, an old or out of business grading company in the United States, uh, HCGS. And they have a website there. You can go up and look up your particular certificate number. Uh, there's about a million of these minted, I think, this year. And this is one of 12 that this company graded at MS70. Honestly, uh, I mean, it's, it's a Chinese grading company. I'm not sure that this slab or this grade or anything would mean much back in, in the West. But for what I paid for it, I think I paid about, you know, I convert it into dollars, would be about $1,310, $1,305 actually when I calculated it out. At that time in a local store in Canada, an online dealer, I could get the same coin ungraded for I think it was 13.25 so I had a little bit better than doing it at home I'm pretty happy with that I mean for what I paid for it I could literally take it out of this slab and put it in my own capsule and uh, and just keep it as, as what it is however uh, I think I might keep it in the slab and just in case I don't know if numismatics would really affect these back at home much and I don't think it would be worth sending it to another company um, like NGC or something like that to have it graded back at home. I don't think it would really add that much to the value or the numismatic. It, basically, this is bullion coin to me in a slab with a Chinese rating on it. So bullion, it's pretty nice bullion. Um, and that's what I'm, I'm aiming mostly at buying in China. I do have sort of a strategy here in China. I'm not going to buy too much more of the silver. Uh, I did price out 100 2019 pandas. The price was really good. It was under what I could buy. I think it was about a dollar less than I can get them back in Canada if I bought the same amount online. And so the deal's better, but I still have to work on the export and get firm answers before I start stocking up too much. However, in China, while I'm away from my stack in Canada, I think my strategy would be to at least keep two or three ounces on hand of gold is very portable and uh, high value, obviously. And I even keep them in my flight bag as I move from city to city. Who knows when, uh, when or if there will be a crash, but the chances are I'm gonna be in China and I'm gonna be away from my stack in Canada. So I would have some immediate real money on hand if I needed to get, say, a flight home, medicine, um, food, whatever it might be. Um, if, if worse came to worse, I could have about two to three ounces on hand with me and anything else I buy above that I'm going to be uh, taking back to Canada and adding to my stack at home. Uh, I have decided even with the stack at home to start uh, evening out my gold to silver ratio so I will be looking at buying some more gold. In the next few weeks I plan to buy at least three more ounces of gold, uh, probably a little bit more. I might buy a couple more of these as well. Actually, I might round it out to have another three. So it'd be one ounce in eight gram coins and uh, a couple or two to three more of the one ounce pandas. I'm looking at that in the next couple of weeks. At home, um, I've added a little bit of silver to my stack at home. It's all sitting in boxes and uh, waiting for my return to open. Uh, looking at returning by July, so there probably be a, I would say at least a couple hundred more ounces there. I'm looking at more to purchase online back at home and uh, send it to my address and wait till uh, I get home to open it and probably do another video on it when I get back. All right, moving on here. I have promised you two more topics, uh, which will be coming up shortly in separate videos. I've decided to start cutting the videos a little bit shorter. So the other topics were personal export of silver or gold from China and the specifics that go with it. And the other was proving the Chinese coins. Let's see if they're real. I'll be doing specific gravity testing and showing you that here on the channel. Those will be linked into descriptions and you can watch them shortly. 
And also, I do appreciate your feedback and your comments to give me an idea for future videos. If you like it, hit the like and subscribe. Thanks for joining me. Have a good day.